We still fail most of the time. Now, I don't mean to say that to be depressing, I just want to state that as a fact. Most of you who raised your hand, most of you entrepreneurs, you're gonna fail. Uh, probably a third of you will fail very quickly and another third of you will fail very slowly and maybe a third of you might be successful at some extent, but from my greedy, blood-sucking venture capitalist perspective, probably only five to 10% of you will really matter to me, economically speaking. Now, of course, you're all beautiful people and I love you and you all matter to me, but when I say I believe in you as an entrepreneur, what I'm really saying is I actually probably believe in about one out of 10 of you. So go out there and try really hard and one of you might really be successful. So let's just kind of review the things that are really important here is less capital required to build companies or at least to build product experiments, let's say. Uh, there are more customers online, particularly on online platforms, and it's easier and easier to get those, uh, get those users and customers to try out your products. And then there's lots of other ways to get capital and build businesses, whether that's accelerators, angel investors, or just you reading on TechCrunch or other like services online. A lot more information is available to entrepreneurs all over the world, whether or not you're in Silicon Valley. Those things make it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed. In particular, if we look at how companies were built maybe 15 years ago, before the first dot-com crash around 2000, some of you may have even forgotten there was a previous dot-com crash around 2000. I actually lived through that. But looking at that before, what I call the big fat dinosaur startup stage, so millions of dollars in hardware and software infrastructure, maybe even hosting infrastructure to get companies off the ground, possibly several years of product development cycles, uh, relatively concentrated places to raise capital, so you probably couldn't get a lot of money unless you were in Silicon Valley or in Boston or a few other places. Um, and not very many people online. So really, a lot of challenges in those environments uh, if you compare them to kind of what's going on now and maybe in the last five years. So most of our costs really uh, are headcount. We're not spending a lot of money on servers. We're not spending a lot of money on software. Most of our services are in the cloud. All these other layers of infrastructure that have been built that we are coming from Google and Facebook and Amazon and other services. So really, we can like stitch these pieces together quite quickly, build product experiments, roll them out in maybe like weeks, possibly even days, and begin testing with hundreds of millions, possibly even billions of people online. Uh, that cost and time framework has just like dramatically reduced one, maybe even two orders of magnitude. And our sources of capital, although they're not everywhere, are much more available now, not just in Silicon Valley, in plenty of metros in the US and plenty of metros around the world. And I call this the lean little cockroach startup phase. Cockroach in that they will survive, hopefully, even nuclear explosions. So now, if you think about those two worlds, really just 10 or 15 years difference, and how much easier it is to build companies online. I go to places, I probably visit 20, 30 countries around the world every year, and I hear people complain about how hard it is to not be in Silicon Valley. Even in the US, I hear about people in like Cleveland or maybe Chicago, like, oh, I'm not in Silicon Valley, I don't get Silicon Valley investors or valuations, or I'm not really aware of the talent. It's such a load of bullshit. It is such a load of bullshit because 15 years ago in Silicon Valley, it was hard as hell to build a startup. It was 100 times as expensive. There were 10 times fewer people. It took you all this time. And people were enthusiastic and crazy in Silicon Valley. Any place in the world is easier to build a startup now than 15 years ago in Silicon Valley. Any place in the world. So shut up and stop whining. Stop whining about lack of access to capital, lack of access to investors or talent, and build your fucking startups. It's easy. Well, it's not really easy, but it's a lot easier. If you look at those two situations, it is much, much easier to build startups anywhere, anywhere, than it ever has been before. This does not mean that you are going to be a billionaire. And again, most of you will fail. But it is easier now than it ever has been before to build a startup. If we think about where we're going to get customers now, all these logos up here, I bet you most of you probably know those logos on the right. Most people in the US, three years ago, they didn't know any of those logos on the right. WeChat, WhatsApp, Line, and Kakao. These are messaging platforms that are probably less than three to five years old. They all have hundreds of millions of users. In the case of WhatsApp, bought for $19 billion by Mark Zuckerberg. 10% of the market cap of Facebook went to buying that product, which didn't exist three to five years ago and had relatively little revenues. Hundreds of millions of users. WeChat, we actually use WeChat on our team because we have a team member in China, used by four or 500 million people, not just in China now as well. So those platforms, content platforms, video platforms, mobile and application platforms, all these things, really, the last five or 10 years, they did not exist before. And now hundreds of millions, if not billions, of people are using these products. Why is that interesting? Because for you as entrepreneurs, you can now reach those customers. Those are your channels of customer acquisition. I'm not suggesting that you are gonna build the next Facebook, the next Instagram, the next WeChat. What I'm saying is that from these five to 10 global 100 million user platforms, you can acquire customers. Hopefully, you can acquire customers predictably, predictably and analytically in such a way that you know what the cost is to get those customers and what the conversion rates are to using your products. 
Uh, AngelList, a platform that, again, didn't really exist three, four years ago. Absolutely changing the face of the game, not just in Silicon Valley, but all around the world. For all of you, all of you who raised your hand, who said you were entrepreneurs, you should all have profiles on AngelList. Now, not all of your investors may be looking on AngelList, but we found companies all over the world on AngelList. We invested in a company out of Croatia called Farmeron that was building web analytics for dairy farmers. Web analytics for dairy farmers. Cows in the cloud. That company was started by the son of a dairy farmer whose father needed to figure out dairy farm milk production for cows. They needed someone, and they, they didn't want to do that in spreadsheets. They wanted to have a web-based product, collect that data, and be able to measure it. They were paying you know, literally hundreds, if not maybe even thousands of dollars a month to like, manage productivity. Now, that may not seem very exciting to you, but dairy farmers are all over the world. And a company in Croatia could be discovered by investors in Europe and the US because of their visibility on AngelList. That company subsequently went on to raise money in London from Seedcamp, in the US from us at 500 Startups, then later from Softec Capital. They raised over $5 million now. So a geek who was the son of a dairy farmer in Croatia raised millions of dollars on a platform called AngelList. That's changing the world.